This week on the MT and Me, we get back on Pearl's to-do list. Hi, I'm Russ. I'm rebuilding a 1977 Mobile Traveler motorhome. This is all about the MT and me. So, last week we pretty well ignored the old girl in the video. This week, we've got a to-do list for Pearl. Now please understand, all this isn't going to get done today. It's kind of a long-range plan. <laughs> but, maybe I can at least get started. Not that long, though. Well, as long as it takes. As long gotta, as it takes, but not like I gotta a super buy, long range. I got to buy some stuff to do this too, which uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But yeah. I have to modify and mount the carburetor. I got to get some tools and nuts and a few accessories to do that. Check the starter. That's not hard. Take the starter off, stick its battery to it. It either works or it doesn't. If it works, no problem. Check distributor cap, rotor and points. That's easily done. You just take it off, check it. Probably needs a good burnishing cleaning, and that'll be it. Uh, clean and replace the plugs and double check the wiring. That's the spark plugs, the spark plug cables. You can do a cursory check of those, but I do want to replace the cables because of age. So, there again, that goes on the shopping list. Repair or seal off vacuum leaks. Got to locate all of them first, find out where hoses are where they should be, and then what sizes are necessary, then I gotta buy some vacuum hose. Uh, change oil and filter. Guess what? You have to buy oil and a filter to do that. Uh, repair ignition wiring. That's something that still has to be scoped out, but uh, I'm hoping it won't be too much of a problem. Now, once you get all that done, then uh, you have to put the engine back together so that we can bump the starter enough to check the engine functions. You just bump it over like eh, 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 just to be sure everything's moving like it should. Before you do that, I'm gonna have to buy new fan belts and put on the front of it, and the accessory belts, and reconnect the radiator and get it back full so there's some coolant in the system. Well, that means I've gotta buy new radiator hoses to top and bottom. I've got them, but they need to be replaced. Then we have to hook up a gravity feed to the carburetor. That means buying some fuel line, and finally, you cross your fingers and close your eyes and hope it works. <laughs> so, so obviously I've got to uh, get some stuff before I can do a lot of this. The plan today is to get started doing what I can do and start making a shopping list. Yes. So one of the things I can do today is check the distributor. So that's where we're going to start, at least, and we'll see where it takes us. Um, what can I do to help you with that? Not much, to be honest. So if you want to just mount the camera and go get to work on your to-do list, uh, that would be okay. Cool. I have a mattress to dissect. <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> Film at 11. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, okay. The fan is on and that noise is going to be annoying, but um, better than a heat stroke. Indeed. Thank you very much. All right. If you Good need luck. me, I'll be right out here. Good luck with that mattress. Thanks. Mm. Stay in the cool breeze. I'll try. So yeah, it is hot today, hot and humid, and uh, we're just getting into mid-morning, so it's not as hot and humid as it's going to be. I'm going to try and get those knocked out, because I don't want to be out here. Pearl is basically a... Uh... Correction, it is exactly 12 noon. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it's not mid-morning, it's midday, 12 noon instead, so... Uh... <laughs> Uh, my point is, it will be getting hot. Yeah, our summer weather, 3 to 5 p.m. is usually the really hot part of the day. So I'd like to be finished by then and inside under the air conditioner. So, we're going to get started on the distributor. Got my uh, handy dandy book with a complete blow-up diagram of the V8 distributor in it. 
And we start by pulling the wires and getting the cap off. Actually, I can take the cap off without pulling these wires because they're already pulled from the spark plugs. I may change that a little later. But You know what? It's clean as a whistle inside. So just for the sake of being in there, I'm going to do a little burnishing on all the uh, points and on the rotor. And then I think we'll be past that point. Let's hope so anyway. Rotor appears to be in excellent condition. No signs of wear or tear or misuse, no breaks, no cracks. Now we'll go around inside the cap, each one of the individual points, cable points, and burnish those areas with the rotor contacts. trying to get the cap back on now and of course this back spring is just a little bit ornery I say back spring it's the one that's uh, up against the ignition coil so it's a little hard to get to The distributor vacuum hose is one that actually looks to be in good condition. I think it'll be all right. All of our connections to the ignition coil look to be good. Just have to kind of assume that the coil itself is still working well. We'll know when we start trying to bump the engine off whether it is or not. The PCV valve hose, here again, it's not in bad shape, but it could stand to be replaced. Now this metal assembly here goes to the, uh, the brake amplifier drum on the power brakes. It has been snipped. I think whenever they took the carburetor off, they were just got in a snipping mood and they when they snipped the gas line over here, they snipped this as well when they didn't really need to. So I'm thinking I can get these cut back evenly to where they're not, uh, not crimped off like they are. And get a section of vacuum hose and just bridge that gap. Hopefully get enough of a seal that the vacuum will go through that. I have another hose break, uh, branching off of that one back here that has also been snipped. And I have no idea where this little hose is supposed to go. So we'll have to trace that one down. Other than that, there will be a vacuum hose coming off of the carburetor that goes to the air cleaner assembly. It goes to the uh, vacuum valve that's in the front of it, which we don't have the air cleaner assembly at all. That's something I also had to buy. It disappeared with the, uh, with the carburetor. There'll be that vacuum connection, so I'll have to get hose for that. And uh, there'll also be a section of hose connecting the breather cap here to the air cleaner as well. Something else I'm going to look into I've seen a lot of these 360 engines that have a large, like a vacuum drum or assembly mounted right here. This little piece of metal on top of the uh, valve cover is actually where it mounted. It's, I don't know, maybe looks like six, seven inches in diameter, sits right here, 
and vacuum hoses run through it. I'm not sure exactly what it's called or of its function. I do know that this did not have one or does not have one. And it really doesn't look like anything's been mounted here. So maybe it's uh, something that's not on all of the 360 Dodge engines. I've got to investigate that. I'll let you know what I find out. Yes. I heard you saying all the things that you need to get, mm -hmm. but I happen to know for a fact that you have no way of writing down your list. That's true. So, with that in mind... Now how in the heck am I going to fold this up in my pocket and take it to the store <laughs> when I go shopping for stuff? <laughs> you're not, but you are going to be able to stand it up in the living room like your to-do list. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> See myself walking into AutoZone with, I've got my shopping list. <laughs> hey man, they take those giant checks. Oh, I'm sure they would. You know. <laughs> as long as I'm buying, I don't think they care what I brought in. <laughs> so I finished um, cutting the the cover off the mattress and I got it sprayed down with water hose. Cool. And other than some spots on the outside of it, it appears that nature has left it alone. So. Awesome. Yay. The mattress she's talking about is the one that was right over my head here in the overcab area of the MT. It had actually been cut apart and modified to the front of this is rounded on the, uh, the uh, overhead board, and it had been cut to fit. So uh, it's, uh, I guess, uh, is it a? It was king? a king. It was a king. What stamped on the side? Of it, it was so. a king size mattress, and they cut it to fit. Well, it had been sitting up there for years, and it had been leaked on for years. It was in pretty nasty shape. If you go back to an early video, you'll find a clip of Sean and myself struggling to get it out of Pearl. I think we can find a clip of so, that. Maybe we can, <laughs> maybe we can find that and drop it in here. But anyway, we, we had a heck of a time getting it out because Pearl still had all of her interior. It would have been a problem now because she's nothing but an empty box. But back then, there was just a little two-foot walk space going down the middle and we like to never wrestle that thing out but we finally did and it's been sitting out airing out all over the winter <laughs> and so Re is just now tearing into it to look at the foam and see what condition it's in so that we can repurpose it maybe so uh, not either, inside pearl probably not in pearl no but uh but maybe for some of the jeep camping yeah you know, so some of the camping in the liberty Anyway, that's the mattress she's talking about. And this is my blank shopping list that I'm talking about. I guess I need to write some stuff on it. Yeah, the so. marker's at the top of it up there. Ah, oh, there we are. Okay. And, by the way, that is your Sharpie, not mine. So, you know. I don't want for you, too. Yes, but I just wanted you to know I brought you yours. I didn't bring you mine. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to secretly swap them and see if you know the difference. As long as I have one and you have one, I'm trade, good. Trade Sharpie. When you have both of them, then I have Trade Sharpie. Them. I have my foot caught on the exhaust manifold. Wait a minute. My boot right. is stuck. I may be here forever. Ah, there we are. Okay. Ah. I'm going inside to continue working. Okay. Go ahead and cool off. Okay, so vacuum hoses for, I'm just going to call it the brake line, actually goes to the amplifier. Uh, let's see, PCB valve, the breather, and uh, what else did I say? Oh, the uh, air filter assembly, yeah. I don't know with vacuum hoses if you measure uh, OD or inner diameter. OD on this one's probably a third of an inch. I'm sure they do it in millimeters. I got a lot to learn, so I'll check that out. Okay, anyway, 
vacuum hoses. Reed just reminded me uh, I need a new hacksaw blade and I need mounting uh, nuts for the carb. We uh, are going to replace the plug wires. And spark plugs. Um, band belts and accessory belts. Uh, I think they call them accessory belts. I had this so organized in my mind and now that I sit down to tell you about it and write it down. Of course my mind is going a million directions at once and I can't even think of my list. What else I gotta get? Well I was gonna do an oil change I know. That's still a little further down the road but uh, oil and filter fuel line. Now eventually, here again on uh, advice from my buddy Glenn, uh, we're going to replace the line from the electric fuel pump, which as you know we confirmed a couple of videos back, back near the gas tank, from the electric fuel pump all the way to the carburetor. Now that's going to be, if I had to guess, 15 feet, 10 to 15 feet of fuel line. Um, so I'll probably go ahead and get that. I'll get an exact measurement and get it. But in the meantime, I do want to take a small section of fuel line so that we can set up uh, just some sort of gravity feed into the carburetor once we get it installed. That way, just something that will keep the uh, float chamber full so that we can test run the engine to be sure it's going to work and do our final tweaks and adjustments on that. So anyway, fuel line and a filter. Because that old one's been on there a long time. We, um, let's see what else we're going to need here. I do know I'm going to have to uh, install new battery cables. It'll be after we get the engine turning over, actually after we get the thing running, before we can determine uh, some of the other things like uh, what kind of condition is the alternator in? Is it still working? This vehicle is old enough that it has a separate voltage regulator. Nowadays, for a number of years now, voltage regulators have been built in to alternators. Uh, so don't go looking for one on your new model car because it's not there. It's built in. But on this one, in the 70s era, they still had a separate voltage regulator external to the alternator. This vehicle also has uh, early the 1970s Chrysler electronic ignition on it. Already I can tell it looks like the uh, voltage regulator has been replaced at one time. Uh, and the electronic ignition may have too. Both of those modules are still readily available. So uh, it's just a question of getting buying them and getting them. Uh, but they're not difficult to come across. So I'm not worried about having a part there that's going to cause me trouble. And here again, I'm not going to put that on the shopping list yet because that's further down the road. That's a may or may not need at this point. This is a pretty good list, and it's more than I can run out and get today. Uh, besides, there's still a few other things I need to do. Uh, we checked the distributor today. Probably the uh, next thing on the list that will be an easy check is the starter. And uh, that means getting under pearl, dropping that starter off, and then we'll have to uh, get some jumper cables, go to a car battery, and see if she runs. Here, I brought you the camera. No, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Stop. 
started to get a little hot in there and I just I decided it was too hot for me to crawl under Pearl and try to get her starter off today so I'm gonna wait on that a little bit. We have a heat index of 107 right this second. No, I really didn't need to know that right now, but thank you. <laughs> so t <laughs> tell, me, tell me what you've been doing, huh? Look at this. I pulled the covers off of the foam. And you washed it, obviously, too, because it's all wet. <laughs> yeah, well, I sprayed it down. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you can see if you pull the cover up, what I was talking about. Oh. With the way they cut it and then folded it. Yeah, yeah. I think we might have mentioned earlier, uh, this is a king-size mattress. Yeah, it's written on the side. I think down there on that Over end. here, hang on. Let me, let me shake y'all around a little bit. I don't know if you can see that through the, the shadows. So, a king-size mattress, if memory serves me correctly, is basically square. I'm going to get right down to it. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, this mattress should have come out to maybe about right here. And to fit it in to Pearl in the uh, overcab section, hey, they obviously cut this, like you said. Yeah, what you see, the cut in your hand right there is the one they did. Right here. Yeah, yeah, right on there. Yeah. <clears throat> so that piping that mm -hmm. right there, that's how much they cut off. That's it. And uh, so they, they did that and then they shaped the foam. They cut the foam off then and shaped it to fit Pearl, which as I said, she's curves on the front in that fiberglass. Straight on the sides and then it kind of curves up to the middle there. And then it's straight across the back. So this is cut to fit the curve and then they took this and come down here on the end here we are can... yeah and this is where they they stitched it they stitched it they pieced it back they took their excess and kind of folded under and stitched it on there and anyway they made it they sealed it back up and it actually did good it fit and uh it was a really nice fit. It was a really fact. nice fit. It really was. It was a fit to get out. <laughs> it, it, it fits so I'm nicely. I'm almost... certain they did this in place. <laughs> so, so anyway, and we are not going to repeat this process. As we told you, we're going to repurpose this, uh, uh, this foam in the mattress because it is obviously still in very good shape. You know, there's no problems with it. It appears to be. Uh, seems seems to be just fine. Yeah. The only, so on. the only bugs are that ant that's been running around on it. <laughs> Trying to find his way that off for a long... That has been all oh, over. He, he had challenged me initially, but, you know, now he's just like... It's, it's a maze. Whatever, you know. <laughs> it's like being in a maze. Oh, no, here he is, right here. I mean, he just disappeared. Oh. It's like being in a labyrinth when he gets on top here. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're showing you this just in case any of you ever decide you need to fit a mattress to a space if you have an MT or some other type of uh, RV or motorhome that has a curved area and you're trying to put a, a bed in there we just want to show you that it is possible but there are a lot of um, travel trailers and motorhomes that have a rear corner bed and those beds have a corner cut off. Yes. We actually went into one when we were looking at motorhomes to where the bed was in the back center, had a large bedroom. It was a big motorhome, it was a big class A. And in the back, the bed was in the middle, but they had both corners cut off of the mattress simply so you could walk around and get to the side of the bed, you know. Which makes you wonder why they kept the point. Hey, really? But Why didn't they was, just... <clears throat> yeah. They anyway. could have shortened the bed and still had yeah. plenty of bed there. Talk about so. specialty sheets. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so there are other options and, uh, and there are other situations where you might want to modify a mattress to fit your motorhome or your travel trailer. Well, or this is, your Jeep. Or your Jeep. <laughs> or your Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> or your, you know... 
overhead camping tent or whatever the case is. We just wanted to show you that it is possible and this is one way that it can be done. Like I said, we're not going to do this. <laughs> but <laughs> and from Haunted House experience, I will tell you that the best way to cut it is to go to the kitchen department and get an electric knife. Well, if you want to be real fancy, would one of those wire cutters do it, I wonder? Those styrofoam nope. wire cutters? They won't do this, No, nope, huh? not on this. <clears throat> not on this, okay. Nope. Wrong type of foam. All right, well, it was just a thought. See, that that's why you built haunted houses. And, and I you just, lit them. I wired them, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, maybe we'll get to the starter next time around on Pearl. And uh, I'm also going to do a little research about that. Remember the vacuum diaphragm I mentioned a little earlier? I'm not really sure what it was. I'll be able to tell you what that is, too, next time we visit here on the MTME. As for Re, I don't know what's next on your list, Reed. Do you have any idea? You've got the mattress cut up. Um, right now, I'm working on consolidating the very last pile of downsizing. Uh, I, I'm putting the finishing touches on putting it all away. And that reminds me, I left something. I need to go get something to show you. Oh, okay. Okay, so do you want to give them a, a visual of the mattress? <laughs> a quick visual, and I'll, Hurry, be, I'll run, be right back. Yes, run. I'll be right back. Hi, I'm back. Like you never left. Exactly. While you were downsizing, you found some stuff <laughs> that we wanted to share here, okay? Something I knew we had, I just lost it. Our, our grandniece, Abby, made these for us. Check this out. See? It says... Move your hands back. Oh, sorry. How's that? Great. All right. I love it. We what gave, does it say? We gave... Yeah, <laughs> what the, you need to do what it says. She did subscribe. And she did this one. These were, she asked me, what do you want it to look like? And I'm like, I don't know. So I printed that off and she colored it in. And she made the other one, which I like a whole lot better. Yeah. Yeah. These are cool. And don't get me wrong. But These I are cool. Like the other one better. And she did the various color combinations yeah. on it. And she did a great job. She did. But, but this one. That's still my favorite. Is an Abbey original. Yeah. <laughs> like the one we used to have in the window. We did. We had one that. Mother Nature took that. Yeah. We, we, the window was very moist and moisture got to it. And I'm afraid we lost that one. But we still have this one. And you know, you wouldn't want to disappoint our little grandniece, Abby. I say little, she's getting bigger every day. So, <laughs> so please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the MT and me. And you'll make her and us very happy. So, the words of Abby, remember them. Also, give us a thumbs up on this video. Like it, share it, and watch it a few hundred times. That, we just love that. <laughs> Join us again next week because we'll be back here again. There's a link below. You can buy a coffee and uh, help with the uh, Pearl Restoration Project, okay? Oh, yeah, that shopping list. That's right. Check yeah. it out. Yeah, that's right. They saw that shopping list earlier in the video. And that and is what it will go towards. That's a lot of money, and that's what the Buy Me a Coffees will buy, actually. You know, I won't. I'll buy my own coffee, but. <laughs> <laughs> There's a frog over here. I don't know if it's coming up on the camera or on the microphone or not, but he is really loud. Okay, well, okay, so we'll turn the yard over to him because he can take the heat better than us. Yes. Till next week, I'm Russ. Reed's behind the camera, and we'll talk later. Uh, now about that popsicle. Don't forget, subscribe. 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 Come on, popsicle. Popsicle. <laughs>